and you know that we have the same goal, which is to get closer to Jesus, the world is still around us when we leave these walls. And, this, and Satan's going to come against us. At any moment that I take my eye off Christ and I get distracted by the world and I start to sink, are you there to, get, to reach your hand out to me to pull me up as my Christian brother and sister? To say, I see that you're sinking a little bit. But what did Peter do? He cried out for help. He didn't turn his back at that point and say, Lord, I'm sinking, I don't need you. He cried out for help so that Christ could pull him back up closer to him. If I'm a Christian, I'm walking, you know that we have the same goals. And I cry out for help. Look, I'm sinking a little bit. I fell. That's okay. As your Christian brother or sister, dust yourself off. Here's my hand. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to pray for you. At that moment, I'm going to be the example for you. I'm going to intercede on your behalf. I'm going to stand in the gap and pray for you. Do we do that? I mean, you might be here and you see someone come consistently and all of a sudden they're not here for a little while. Because we don't know what's really going on in their life. Do we truly love them to say, man, I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to stand there. I'm going to pray. Everything might be okay, but I want to pray and make sure that everything's okay. Because that person might have slipped, sink a little bit. I'm right there. I'm the Christian brother or sister with my hand out to say, you're crying out for help. I'm there to pull you up. That's what Christ did for Peter. Are we, do we do that same thing? And I said, Lord, if I see somebody hurting, or if I see someone has taken their eye off you a little bit, but they're crying out for help, but they just are in a little bit of a difficult situation, I want to make sure that I'm right with you so that my mind is right and I'm available to help them. Because if not, if I'm not in communion with you, Lord, then I can become judgmental. If your mind isn't right and the thoughts aren't right, and you've allowed Satan to get in there and you say, yeah, yeah, she was coming to church. And all of a sudden, I seen her, I, I saw her at the club. You gossip and telling everyone, you're not there saying, listen, I know that you might be struggling. I know you might be dealing with something. I know you might have things that are going on that seem like you can't get out of it. But I'm right here as your Christian brother or sister to pray for you and help you. That's what Jesus did here. And that's what I want to pray that God can help us to do. Um, so how else does God, how else does Jesus exemplify here how we can show God's mercy and grace? Um, let's turn to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verse 46. Now, we talked about, you know, being how Jesus was tempted by the devil, devil and what he did and how we can do the same thing. Setting pri how Jesus set priorities and focusing on the Lord. How Jesus showed us how to trust God during life storms. Jesus showing mercy and grace to others. So now I want to look a little bit about this, the idea of putting family into perspectives in terms of these priorities. Matthew chapter 12 verse 46 says, While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. That's very bold. Which is why I'm still praying. I said, Lord, please, I want to have the, I want to have Jesus' boldness living in me. I told you when I went to Atlanta and I saw this, this health official in California, he said, listen, it's great that we're talking about changing the community, getting restrictions, getting mentorship for people, et cetera. And I think the topic at that moment was teen pregnancy. He said, but really the foundation of it is God being in our community. Are we putting God first? And he was bold enough to say that in front of, you know, people from across the country. He didn't care. He said, God is what our priority is. And if we can get that right, then a lot of other things will come a little bit easier. Amen. We're doing it kind of backwards. Jesus says here, who are my mother and my father and my brother and my sister? Who? It's those that do the will of my father. That's my family. Those who my mother and brother and sister are. I mean, that's very, very bold. And I pray, I said, Jesus, I want to be bold like you. We can have family, friends, even our parents around us that live very ungodly lives. 
and call us to do ungodly things too just because of the fact that we're their children or we're their sister or we're their whatever. You know, my father will say, well, I need you to buy me a pack of cigarettes. I'm not buying you a pack of cigarettes, and I understand that you're my father and I love you. And that took a lot for me to get to that point, to be able to boldly say, listen, I live for God, and I stand for Christ, and I'm not going to buy you cigarettes. If that's a habit that you have, I'm going to continue to pray for you. I'm there for you to give you the support that you need, but that doesn't involve me buying you cigarettes. So... To someone in, of you know, that generation, that's totally disrespect, and that's you not honoring your mother and father. And mind you, Satan can use your parents just like he uses anyone else to say, you know, you're supposed to be a Christian. You're supposed to honor your mother and your father. All right? You can totally take Satan, can dress it up and change it and make you feel like you're doing something wrong. But if you trust and lean on God and the teachings, because nothing can be, nothing can be contrary to the word of God. And I'm not going to go with your habits. I'm going to stand and lean on God's word and say, listen, I'm not going to support your habits. But I'm there to help you. I am. And that's with anything. With anything that it is that your family might ask you to do or parents, whatever. My family, my brothers and sisters, my parents are those that do the will of God. And that's not to say that I'm not there for my, of course I am. And I love them dearly and I'm there and I'm exemplifying Christ and I'm praying with them and I'm giving them all the support. But when it comes down to it, the final message when we're together is I want you to know who Jesus is. Yes. Because I don't want to be here going through the motions pretending like everything is okay when I know that you don't know who, who Jesus is. So that's my, I'm getting close to my relationship and my relationship with Christ. We share Christ with other people. I'm sharing Christ with you and if you're not at that point where you're ready to accept Christ, that's okay. Because the grace and mercy that God has showed us, we show it to other people too. But the bottom line is, hell is there. And I want to be there to say, I'm here for you, and I know the Lord. I know what God has done for me, and you've seen it. But you're my friends and family, the blood friends and family. You're my blood parents, so I love you. But I want you to know who Christ is too. But I will not waver, and I won't be lukewarm as a Christian just because you're my parents, or just yes, because you're my amen. family, amen. or just because it's a, you know, a family cookout. And there are things that are ungodly there that I'm going to participate in them because you're my blood family. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be bold and stand for Christ and say these are the things that God would have me to do. Amen. And Jesus exemplified that. He said, listen, I understand those are my, you know, my family, but those that follow the will of God are my family. Those are my yes. brothers and sisters. So, so I want to talk again, while we're on that, talk a little bit about how Jesus deals with unbelievers. So let's go to Matthew chapter 13, and we're already right there. Matthew chapter 13, verse 54. Matthew 13, verse 54 says, And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then has this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. And I said, Lord, is, you know, what's my purpose? I'm walking, I want to walk closer to you. I want my relationship to grow with you. I want to grow in Christ. My purpose is not to convince unbelievers. Jesus said he didn't do many works there because of their unbelief. He came there. He presented himself. He taught in the synagogue. They didn't believe him. They didn't want to have anything to do with him. So I said, Lord, am I spending my time trying to convince the believers, or am I going there to tell them, here's who Jesus is, here's what God has done for me, this is what God has brought me out of, Jesus is available for you, he died on the, sin, on the cross for all of our sins. And then if you're, if you're not interested, if you don't want to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then my duty as a Christian, as Christ exemplified, I don't need to convince you of that. 
All I need to do is bring you the word, bring the word of God to you, share it, and I'm going to be that light so that you can see Christ through me. Because all of my good works are really to glorify God anyway. Yes. So I'm there and available as a Christian brother and sister, but I'm not there to convince you to do that. Just letting you know to know the consequences of not doing it, but not to convince you and to persuade you in any way, just like Jesus did. So in this scripture, the people that are there are saying, wait a minute, who is this dude? I mean, isn't he this, this, this guy, the carpenter's son? I mean, who is this guy? You can experience that same thing as a new believer. Isn't this the same girl that was just like fighting down the street with a couple other people? And now she's over here talking about Jesus this and Jesus that, and she's going to church. You see this all the time. This is the same person that was over here at, you know, such and such place doing, doing some ungodly stuff. Now she got saved and now she's different. You're a hypocrite. You were doing the same thing I was doing. How dare you judge me? You know, these are the things that we come up against all the time. Because people are just going to try to belittle you. You're no one. You're just the same person that we saw last week. Now you went to Pastor Clyde's church and you got saved and now you're totally different. Because we're new in Christ. And people are not necessarily going to understand that. And that's not anything to get us discouraged. Because maybe last week we were doing some different things. And maybe even in our Christian walk we'll do some things. But because God is merciful and forgives us, and we know that we can go back to Christ and ask for forgiveness. Amen. But people are not necessarily going to understand that. And they're going to bring that up. Isn't this the same person that was just doing whatever? Who is she? Who is she to come pray with me? I remember when you used to do, you know, whatever. But that's okay. Because we know where God has brought us from. And we know that we're clean. When we accept Christ for our life, and we make a decision that we are going to focus our energy, set our priority, ensure that we take our, our thoughts and put them into submission to God's word, and that we're going to study God's word, and we're going to move our relationship closer in Christ, that we can walk with that confidence and assurance. To know that there's going to be plenty of people in the world that are going to bring up our past. Amen. Say, aren't you so-and-so? Aren't you so-and-so child? Didn't you do this? Weren't you involved in that? It does not matter. And our goal is not to convince <laughs> anyone, because we already, we already understand and we know that Christ forgives us. So when we need to go convince the unbelievers, well, yeah, I know I used to be involved. Okay, yeah, but I am new in Christ. Yes. yes. I am born again. And I'm still, I'm still, I still may have mistakes. But I serve an awesome God who's forgiving and who loves me. And that's what we can stand assured on. So I hope that this, that these are some scriptures that you can take back home, meditate on, and pray about, and allow God to speak to you so that in your Christian walk and you getting closer to Christ we can start all exemplifying Christ, doing what would Jesus do? I mean, it was a cliche, it was a cliche, but it really is true in our lives every day. What would Jesus do in this situation? How would Jesus be spending this time right now? How would Jesus forgive others? And then that will allow us to take those practical things on an everyday basis for us to get our relationship closer to Christ. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, I thank you, and I thank you, and I thank you, and I thank you for being the wonderful God that you are. And Lord, I thank you for your forgiveness. And I thank you for your mercy and your grace. And Lord, I ask that your words will continue to rest on our hearts, Lord. That we will be focused on you, and we will be focused on our individual ministries and our individual relationships with you, Lord God. And, Lord, we trust and we believe and we know that we're going to walk closer to you, Lord. And, Lord, we ask that you would continue to use us so that we can have the same grace and the mercy as we walk in our Christian lives to love our brothers and sisters, Lord. So we can let our light shine no matter where we are. That we can shine so that when people see us, they, that you will be glorified, Lord. And, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We lift you up and we ask all these things in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Yeah.